Welcome to Positive Kids Podcast, dedicated to developing resilient minds, with your host, Chanel Arterbridge. Hello, my name's Chanel. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to be your podcast host for a Positive Kids Place. So this is our first episode, and I really appreciate you taking a moment to listen in on what we're going to do here with this podcast. So I aim every week to just share information and promote awareness about ACEs and uh, to encourage the use of positive affirmations as we deal with the effects of ACEs. ACEs, by the way, stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences. And so my goal with this podcast is to make sure that you become aware of ACEs and also how to reduce their effects on our health and hopefully to prevent them or reduce them in our kids primarily. So that is my aim for this podcast when I when you join me weekly. Now, to just let you know a little bit about myself, I am a working mom. I'm also married, going on 10 years this year. Wow, we made it. <laughs> I have two boys uh, right now. They are Alex and Preston, and they are ages right now of eight and five. So I'm in the elementary school age bracket right now going through that <laughs> with two boys. And so I will aim to drop some value to you weekly, and hopefully life won't get in the way of doing that. But thank you uh, for being patient with me. And uh, hopefully when you do stop by, because I know you are busy as well, you will get some value and it will be most impactful to you and your family here. So just my vision here, as I said, is to spread awareness of ACEs and to promote the practice of positive affirmations. And why did I choose that? And that's because I've been doing positive affirmations with my children, especially my son, Alex, who is eight at the moment. We've been doing this since he was three years old. And the results from it is just, it's mind blowing. And it's something that I kind of wish that I personally had as a child at his age. And so basically, I am giving my children what I longed for probably as a child or just wish I had as a child, trying to give them all the tools necessary so that they can overcome adversity as they grow and develop and socialize in this world. So that's what I've been doing with my son uh, since the age of three, practicing positive affirmations. It has improved his self-esteem. He is just a ham when it comes to socializing. He's very open. It's just really helped him in regards to being resilient. And so I want to encourage other parents and caregivers and teachers and so on. Anyone that was willing to listen to, please start this type of a practice with your children. And I will definitely tell you what I've been doing with my son for the last five years. Okay. And then also Preston, you know, he just followed in suit. It's such a natural thing in our household that we do to the point where Their eyes and ears are perched to it when they hear it in a movie, when they hear it in a song. They even will correct me sometimes if I have negative talk, uh, if I say something uh, that may be discouraging, they will also say, hey, mom, don't say that. You know, words become real. That's something where they are just there. They understand the power of the tongue. And so I am here to really share that. So many children need it. I wish I had it. And so I'm demonstrating that with my two sons. Now, where did I get on the track of ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences? I really stumbled into that in regards to Positive Kids started out as a t-shirt brand that I created because I had a shirt that my son, I think I brought it from Children's Place, my youngest son, Preston, um, who was currently five, about two years ago. I picked up a shirt, very simple black t-shirt with white writing on it that said, I am your future president. That was it. And he had it on. He was about two years old. We got so many comments on this $7 t-shirt from people. You know, of course, Barack Obama was in office at the time. And so, you know, it was just uh, my sons are, are black. I don't know if that was it, but just the simple, I am your future president. And when it comes to clothing for our youth, especially my boys, there's not really any impactful messaging on kids clothing I soon discovered after that and that when it comes to what I pick up for my kids you know they have trucks on them they have blocks on them they have a lot of miscellaneous 
unnecessary designs on them. Whereas this statement, it really just personified what I teach my children. A lot of I am statements. I am dot, 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 dot. You know, that's exactly what it embodied, what we practice at home. And then just the response from other people when he was wearing it, it spoke out. And so I just had a idea of why not create a line of t-shirts that actually have a lot of positive statements on them that when you wear it, it empowers you, it reminds you, it corrects any discouraging self-talk. Why not wear how you feel or how you want to feel instead of just having a dumpster truck or a Tonka truck on your shirt? So that one shirt that was not my own, I am your future president, sparked something in me to really take what I am teaching my children on a daily basis and put it out there to the world. So that was, that was my first attempt of putting it out there to the world is through t-shirts. As I continue, I'm always looking for ways to be a better parent and just trying to improve what I had as a child and make sure they are a little bit more well-equipped. You know, every generation should be better than the one prior. And so that is my aim. And so when I was talking about, I think I stumbled upon Dr. Nadine Burke Harris's TED Talk. If anyone hasn't heard of her, she is basically pioneering the movement for ACEs at the moment. She did not come up with this study, I'm about to tell you, but since its inception, she has really taken it and really put it out there for people like me to understand it. So when I heard that TED Talk and she talked about how you know, there are so many different types of adverse childhood experiences, including discrimination, that can really impact a child's development. You know, it really triggered something in me because one of the main reasons why I do positive affirmations with my sons is because I really want my boys to get a grasp of who they are before the world tells them who they are before the world forces their narrative upon them. And so I really try, I'm trying with all my might to build my children up from the inside out as much as I can. And if I can just really help them internalize a mantra of, you know, I am strong, I am blessed, I am capable of doing good things. I am deserving of good things. If I can just get that type of dialogue going in in them, I understand that the social political climate that we are living here right now in the U.S., as they get older, they're going to get a lot of things opposing that. But if it comes up against a solid foundation of positive self-talk and positive mindset, I feel it would give them a better advantage to overcome that. And so that is the main reason why I started Positive Affirmations with my children, because I am raising two African-American boys. And as a mother, I am trying to equip them with everything that they need in order to overcome the adversity they are going to face. Okay, I understand that they're not always going to be embraced lovingly or looked upon lovingly and adoringly and as children. But as they grow, unfortunately, the new cycle reminds me daily that, you know, they're up against some negative treatment from others, unfortunately. And so when it comes to the positive affirmations, that's really one of the tools I'm trying to equip them with in order to develop their mindset. Okay, so when I heard that Dr. Nadine Burke Harris had put a name to what I was trying to do, it just really encouraged me, motivated me, let me know that I am on the right track. So this, what she talks about, adverse childhood experiences, there was a study that was done back in 1995 where there was a relationship between certain events a child experienced prior to the age of 18 and their health risk as an adult. So they took, you know, over 17,000 people and they analyzed them, observed them, and they had them fill out a 10-question survey. 
answer yes or no to them and then answer, add up all their points. And if they got a score, that score was related to certain negative health risk that they would have as an adult. And so that right there let me know that there was something that I need to see in regards to how does adverse childhood experiences, you know, will they affect me? Will they affect my children? So I went ahead and took the survey myself. Anyone can take it. You can find it on my website. Um, I have a link that will take you to the the screening survey. It's 10 questions. Does not need to be interpreted by a doctor at all. It'll take you two minutes or less to do it. It's 10 questions. You click yes or no. At the end, you add up all your yeses and that will let you know your risk for certain predisposed negative health risk. And so in the study, it talked about certain things such as when it comes to neglect, financial challenges, abuse, things of that nature were put onto the questionnaire. And so that would determine how likely uh, you would be to getting certain negative health outcomes. Okay. So if you had zero ACEs, you know, you're fine. And as you get, you know, one ACE and then two ACE, as you keep going up four or more, it does really put you in the red zone there. I myself have four ACEs myself. Thankfully, my children so far do not have any. And and that's great. And I want to keep it that way. And so this has definitely helped me gauge uh, how to parent my children. But it also has helped me understand myself. And um, it's kind of empowered me to help me understand what has happened to me and what could happen to me and how to treat it. So that is something that the ACEs score has allowed me to do. But in regards to the outcome, there are certain things. I'll just tell you what they are really quickly. Uh, Such negative health outcomes are smoking, alcoholism, depression, diabetes, heart disease, suicide attempts, COPD, drug use, stroke, STDs, cancer. These are all possible outcomes that your risk increase as you get more ACEs, okay? Now, one in six people have four or more ACEs, okay? And that lets me know out of the test, the 17,000 people, there are a lot that have four or more, and there's even more that have at least one. So over 60% have at least one, okay? The most common ACEs were the emotional abuse, parental separation or divorce, or substance abuse by a household member. So as you read the 10 questions on the website, you will definitely be able to understand what I'm saying. It will, for example, say, have your parents ever been divorced or separated? Check yes, you know, say yes or no. That is a question, okay? And so if you said yes, that's you at least have one score, you one point towards your score, okay? Now, if you have six or more ACEs, this was an alarming uh, fact here from the study that you're more likely to die earlier uh, by 20 years than someone who has none. And that is something that was quite alarming. So you can see how urgent it is to understand your ACE score and also to kind of keep a barometer of what's going on with your children. It's great that I know for myself, but then also it helps me understand about my kids. So in regards to me spreading the awareness, of course, once I became aware of this, I wanted to share it with other parents. And so that's where Positive Kids has transformed from a t-shirt brand (laughs) to now uh, building awareness of ACEs. And it's really a public health issue. And of course, we still do have Positive Kids merchandise available on our website to support the messaging now. But at the forefront, it is 
what can we do in order to help our children deal with ACEs or to prevent ACEs. And so Positive Kids, every week when I come on here, I will definitely be helping you with our three pillars. And that is to make sure as parents, we are providing positive feedback that encourages our children to see themselves with positive identities. Also to practice daily affirmations so that our children can redirect thoughts before they have an intense emotional response. And then also, it is important that we learn how to create routines for our children to reduce exposure to stressful experiences as much as we can. I mean, we're not going to be able to protect them from everything, but uh, at least we can try to give them tools so that they can overcome these adversities uh, that they will definitely face as they develop. Okay. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, Chanel, Aces... How is this possible? What's going on? And the best way I can try to explain, I'm going to get a little sciencey here, if that's a word, but I am going to try to make it as plain language as possible and just try to explain it to how I was able to understand it. Okay. And what is happening to our children and even to ourselves for those who have ACEs once you take the test is that when we are children and we are exposed to a stressful event, there is a biological circumstance that happens in our body. And we like to call it the fight or flight system that actually is engaged. Okay. So when you are in front of something, we'll call it a bear. Okay. When you are in front of the bear, you start getting adrenaline in your body and you are ready to either fight this bear or to run away from the bear. But there's a lot of stuff going in your on in your body to make that happen, to get you ready for either choice that you're willing to make. And one way is a major hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is released in your body when you're in this engagement, this fight or flight state. And this is done on purpose. This hormone is raising your blood pressure to make sure the blood gets to all the muscles that you needed to get it to so that when you're ready to take off, you could take off and, you know, your blood sugar is going up and you're just wide awake. OK, so you're you're not sleepy at all. You're awake. <laughs> you're at the most alertness you can be. You're most alert as possible. And so this bear, um, let's say, try to put it. In more layman's terms, the bear could be a parent you grew up with that was maybe an alcoholic or who was verbally abusive to you. Um, it could be a caregiver of some sort. It could be a bully at school. You know, someone or something that puts you in a fight or flight type of response within your body. Okay. It could be the fact that you may live in a neighborhood that has a lot of violence. And so, you're always on alert, okay? It could be even racism, okay? Because I will tell you, as a mother right now, raising my two boys, I'm on alert, okay? And, you know, and I'm scared for them. And and I know that I will eventually have the talk with them where they are going to have to be on alert, okay? They're going to have to be engaged in this fight or flight sometimes, um, it's just because they're going to have to be aware of their environment and who is in that environment and how to respond. But I do want you to understand what is happening. It's a natural thing, fight or flight, cortisol in your body. It was meant to get you ready to fight or to run away. So this is all natural. What is not natural is that this is not supposed to be engaged for a long period of time. So if you are, let's say you're living with a parent that is abusive, unfortunately, you're always in this type of state, this high alert, stressful state. And the cortisol that's in your body is actually doing a disservice to you now instead of helping you because it's in your body too long at high levels. And so if your child is going to school every day, And bumping up against the bully, you know, it's something every day. They're getting antsy about that. And, you know, you're living in an environment, you're you're 
that you're unable to move from. So it's a, if it's a violent community, then so you're always engaged in this state. And now your body starts to malnourish certain things because it has to put all its resources into helping you either run or fight. And so when it comes to certain resources your body needs, such as brain development, emotional uh, development, certain things as as children we need, immune system strength, uh, how well we're able to fight off diseases and things, that becomes compromised because again, our body is ready at all times to take off. And so it's kind of sucking the sucking the resources from what we need in order to pay attention in school and to make sure that we're able to have, you know, good reasoning skills and making sure our body is at its optimal peak strength in order to fight off disease. All of that is compromised, unfortunately, because we are at high stress alert. So when you start to answer those questions and you start to get higher scores, it basically means you had been in this state for far too long. You've been in a high alert fight or flight state too long as a child prior to the age of 18. And that's where most of our development takes place. Our physical, mental development takes place. Our brain development takes place. And so if that is compromised during that time, then that's why 20, 30 years later, when you get older, certain diseases start to arise. And so that's what the ACE score is trying to portray to you and is telling you. It's like having a cholesterol screening. It's just letting you know the state of your toxic stress, how well you deal with it. That's actually a term. So when you are engaged in fight or flight for too long, the natural stress response of your body becomes toxic. Then it's hard to do certain things and to develop right. And so we here at Positive Kids with the positive affirmations and also creating routines and just really encouraging parents to as much as possible, give positive feedback to their children to try to mitigate stressful uh, environments our kids may be in. So there are six components that will help in maintaining or trying to make sure that you don't have the fight or flight engaged for far too long, okay? And that is, of course, adequate sleep. We want to make sure that You know, we're getting our eight hours of sleep because during that time of the day is when our body is in reset mode and the cortisol levels are returned to normal. Okay. And so that's natural for everyone. All right. That's when our body absorbs the cortisol again. And so it's a reset. Exercise, of course, you want to make sure you get adequate exercise, nutrition, It's very important to get nutrient-dense foods in there as well to give our bodies the best effort it can at fighting off diseases. Mindfulness is another that, of course, is where Positive Kids is going to live when it comes to these six components. We are going to live there in the mindfulness part. And, of course, establishing healthy relationships And just keeping tabs on our mental health, rather it be therapy, counseling, we would want to make sure that we have a way of dealing with it. If we need to seek professional help, you definitely want to do that as well. So these are all part of the toxic stress toolkit. So how do we make sure that we can reduce the effects of ACEs or prevent them in in our children? This is what you would want. And this is all found on the website as well, a good framework as well. So sleep, exercise, nutrition, mindfulness, healthy relationships, and mental health. And so as I said, the Positive Kids is going to live in the mindfulness component of the toolkit. And of course, that has to deal with the positive affirmations. The mindfulness component is basically the practice of being aware of your internal thoughts and your feelings. 
Okay. And that's one of the things that I have been teaching my son since the age of three is when he's able to speak the affirmations and it becomes part of his kind of DNA in a way, it just becomes a habit to him. He's then in tune to when a negative thought comes in, he knows, okay, that I have to redirect that or I have to go ahead and, and say uh, a positive affirmation to combat that. So encouraging the practice of positive affirmations is meant to also make sure that we don't go in that fight or flight mode for too long. We don't want the emotions to get so intense that we then have the whole uh, cortisol levels are, you know, going rogue and things like that. So that's what that is for practicing of positive affirmations is to stop the intense emotional response before it gets, it gets crazy. Okay. So that's how we're able to help the children. So I call you to just visit the website, of course, take the survey, 10 questions, and we will definitely uh, come back again next week in regards to going over expanded ACEs and just really getting into more granular detail about ACEs. But I just wanted to go ahead and give you a little glimpse into what I'm going to be talking about on this podcast. And so that you can uh, definitely get some value from it and it will uh, help you to spread the word, spread the word to other parents and let me know what you need for me to explain to you. So again, my name is Chanel. I'm going to be your podcast host here on Positive Kids Podcast. And I look forward on a weekly basis to making you aware of ACEs and promoting the use of practicing uh, positive affirmations. So I thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> it's my first episode and hopefully we definitely will get this going and, and so on. But I thank you so much for joining me and being patient with me and you have it. Please join me next week. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Positive Kids Podcast. For more information, visit our website at www.positivekp.com.